Today's video is sponsored by Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a totally free daily newsletter and just like a rich cup of coffee is something that you don't want to start your workday without. It's a quick, well-organized look into both light and heavy news that you can receive every day, Monday through Saturday. And I've been subscribed for well over a year. It's really good. It's basically where I get my news. And these days, who's got the time to sit down and watch the news every morning or go through a long, dry, crusty news section in your local newspaper? Morning Brew tells you what you need to know along with some really cool or interesting tidbits that you can keep in your back pocket to use as conversation starters to make you seem like a more interesting person than you really are. <laughs> Get back on the talking points. So, for instance, earlier today I was reading my most recent copy. This is being recorded in early November, and it has all of these good bite sized bits of information on the recent US elections and also an update about inflation data. So, you could find out how much less your money is going to be worth, which is depressing. There was also an explanation of how the US Federal Reserve would eventually start raising interest rates next year. <laughs> Brilliant. And they used Lord of the Ring gifts, which I didn't understand, but. I assume most people did. So yeah, it's a great mix of quick blurbs that you should know, plus short profiles on media news items that you want to keep up with. In short, if you like finance, current events, or tech, you should absolutely subscribe to Morning Brute. There's no reason not to. It's totally free, takes 10 seconds to sign up. There is a link below. And now today's video. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. While Shakespeare was being metaphorical when he wrote Julius Caesar, animals have been a part of warfare from the very dawn of human history, from horses, camels, and even elephants charging into battle as cavalry mounts to mules hauling supplies to pigeons and dogs carrying messages. Time and time again, our fine fairy and feathered friends have displayed extraordinary courage on the battlefield, often making the ultimate sacrifice in service of their human masters. Yet while human soldiers have for centuries received various medals to honor feats of gallantry and battle, it was not until the Second World War that an award was created to honor their equally heroic animal companions. Sometimes called the Animals Victoria Cross, the Dickin Medal was created in 1943 by British animal welfare pioneer Maria Dickin. Born on September 22, 1870 in Hackney, Dickin ran a successful music studio in Wimpole Street, London until 1899, when she married a successful accountant to move to Hampstead. Freed of the responsibilities of work, like many wealthy women of her day, Dickin turned her energies to social work. In 1917, while working in the slums of London's East End, Dickin was struck by the misery and suffering not only of the urban poor, but also of their animals. Later writing in her 1950 memoir, Cry of the Animal, I saw many dogs and cats walking on three legs, dragging along a broken or injured limb, others nearly blind with mange, covered with sores, nearly all looking dejected and miserable and searching for food in the gutter. Later that year, Dickens' beloved dog fell gravely ill and died. Though she was easily able to afford its treatment, her experiences in the East End led her to worry about those who could not. And so, on November 17, 1916, Dickens opens the People's Dispensary for Sick Animals Animals, or PDSA, a charity clinic offering free veterinary services to the people of London. Located in a cellar in the Whitechapel district, the dispensary was staffed largely by volunteers and featured a large sign announcing, Bring your sick animals. Do not let them suffer. All animals treated. All treatment free. From these humble beginnings, the PDSA grew rapidly. In 1921, Dickin converted a horse-drawn caravan into a mobile clinic in order to reach even more animals and owners, while in 1923 the PDSA established six more veterinary clinics across London. This number steadily grew to 17 in 1924 and 57 in 1927, with PDSA clinics treating nearly 410,000 animals every year. The organization also expanded its operations abroad to France, Romania, Morocco, Egypt, Greece, and Palestine, and in 1928 opened Europe. Europe's first dedicated animal sanatorium in Ilford, Essex, a 30-acre complex featuring spacious stables and kennels, x-ray and UV light treatment facilities, and a state-of-the-art operating theatre. These activities were largely funded through private donations, including a £50,000 endowment from wealthy animal lover Sarah Grove Hardy. Yet despite the PDSA's success, Dickin was not without her detractors. Many questioned the logic of devoting time and energy to the alleviation of animal rather than human suffering. However, Dickin saw the two problems 
as inseparably intertwined, pointing out that poor people do not only keep animals as pets, but as a means of earning their living, and London's humbler dwellings would be overrun with vermin if their inhabitants did not keep a cat. But Dickens' greatest opponent was the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, who were appalled by the fact that PDSA clinics were staffed by what they saw as unqualified amateurs. The RCVS denounced the PDSA as dangerous, and Maria Dickens is a clueless eccentric, with veterinary surgeon G. H. Livesey writing in 1926 that it is mainly because there are so many cranks on these animal welfare committees that our relations have not always been of the best. All of us who have had experience in dog practice know that there are ladies, generally childless, who have to turn their attention to something, and nearly always they turn to dogs. Dick encountered by sending a letter to the journal Veterinary Record, writing, I may perhaps be permitted to say that to claim that knowledge of and capacity to treat ailments of animals are possessed by veterinary surgeons alone is as ridiculous as to suggest that none but an admitted solicitor or barrister has any knowledge of the law. She further pointed out that the Veterinary Surgeons Act of 1881 only made it illegal to falsely claim the title of veterinary surgeon. It did not make it illegal to offer veterinary care without a license. And in a final throw down of the gauntlet, Dickin wrote to the RCVS that, If you are so concerned about the proper treatment of sick animals of the poor, open your dispensaries. Open them everywhere, for there are vast factory, mining, manufacturing, and Dockland areas where nothing at all exists to help the sick animal. Do the same work we are doing. Instead of spending your energy and time hindering us, spend it in dealing with this mass of misery. Indeed, the RCVS's grievance with Dickin had less to do with animal welfare than with the fact that PDSA clinics were seen as stealing business from established veterinary surgeons. This attitude was perhaps best summed up by Charles H. Hush, a valuer and selling agent for veterinary practices, who wrote in 1930, I wonder if you are afflicted with one of those dreadful people's animal dispensaries in your neighborhood, which are conducted by white, smocked, unqualified men in dozens of towns in the southern counties with disastrous results to many veterinary surgeons. And within the present month, I know for a fact that the receipts of two of my clients in Kent are down close to £400 for the year. Before these establishments were open, both of them took one pound a day cash for treatment of dogs and cats, and now they don't take a pound a week. In one of the towns, sitting born, there are boxes in every shop and public house, and of course the proprietors get free attention for their animals from having the collecting boxes on their counters. Bands with white smocked men in charge also daily scour the surrounding villages for patients. Yet despite the RCVS's best efforts, the PDSA continued to go from strength to strength, and by 1930, its clinics and mobile units were treating nearly one million million animals every year. The organization still operates to this day, running a network of 48 pet hospitals and hundreds of charity shops across the UK. When the Second World War broke out in September 1939, thousands of animals were called into service, just as they had been in the previous war. In order to recognize the service and bravery of these animals, in 1943, Maria Dickin and the PDSA created the Dickin Medal. The medal consists of a bronze medallion with a laurel wreath motif bearing the words for gallantry on one side and we also serve on the other. It is hung from a ribbon with a green, brown, and blue stripe representing the naval, ground, and air forces. Since its inception, the Dickin Medal has been awarded 73 times, 36 to dogs, 32 to pigeons, 4 to horses, and 1 to a cat. In 2001, the PDSA also created the PDSA Gold Medal for Animals in Civilian Service, while in 2014, the organization awarded a single honorary Dickin Medal to Warrior, a First World War Canadian cavalry horse, to commemorate all the animals who served in conflicts prior to the medal's creation. If we were to list the extraordinary exploits of all 73 Dickin Medal recipients, this video would be multiple, multiple hours long. So instead, here are but a handful of the bravest furry and feathered warriors to receive the award. Nearly half of all Dickin medals have gone to carrier pigeons, which, despite advances in radio communications technology, continued to serve with distinction well into the Second World War. Indeed, most Allied bomber and maritime patrol aircraft carried at least one pigeon in case they were shot down or their radios became inoperative. So it was that White Vision, a white N attached to number 109 Squadron RAF, found herself adrift when her PBY Catalina flying boat was forced to ditch in the North Sea on October 11, 1943. With the aircraft's radio out of action and poor weather preventing an aerial search, the crew dispatched White Vision with a message bearing their current position. The bird flew for nearly 100 kilometers against a strong headwind before arriving at her pigeon loft at Solemn Vaux in the Shetland Islands. The search was resumed and all 11 crew members were rescued after only 18 hours at sea. For her perseverance, on December 2, 1943, White Vision became the very first recipient of the Dickin Medal. Other notable winged recipients include Winky and 
and Tyke, who, like White Vision, saved the lives of aircraft lost at sea. Beachcomber, the first pigeon to bring back news of the disastrous Dieppe raid on August 19, 1942. Paddy and Gustav, the first pigeons, to bring back news of the Normandy invasion on June 6, 1944. Kenley Lass, the first pigeon to deliver intelligence from an Allied agent in enemy-occupied France. And William of Orange, who saved the lives of 2,000 British paratroopers in the Dutch town of Arnheim during the ill-fated Operation Market Garden in September 1944. But perhaps the most famous pigeon of the war was G.I. Joe, a seven-month-old male serving with the United States Army Pigeon Service. On October 18, 1943, Allied forces advancing through Italy ordered an airstrike on German positions around the village of Calvi Vecchia. However, while the aircraft were being ready, troops of the 169th London Infantry Brigade succeeded in retaking the town ahead of schedule. Unable to reach the American airfield by radio and call off the impending airstrike, the troops instead dispatched G.I. Joe, who flew the 32-kilometer distance in only 20 minutes, stopping the aircraft just as they were about to take off. G.I. Joe saved the lives of over 100 soldiers and the citizens of the town, and for his actions he was awarded the Dickin Medal on November 4, 1946. Dogs have often been called man's best friend, and it is thus perhaps unsurprising that the largest number of Dickin Medals have been awarded to our canine companions. Many of these recipients served as rescue dogs, helping to locate people trapped under the rubble of collapsed buildings during the London Blitz of 1940. Among the first of these was Rip, a stray terrier discovered wandering the streets of London by air raid warden E. King and adopted as the official official mascot of the B-132 air raid protection post. Despite being untrained, Rip soon demonstrated an innate talent for locating people trapped under rubble and is credited with saving nearly a hundred lives. Rip's service inspired other air raid wardens to adopt and train dogs for this purpose, including fellow Dickin Medal recipients Jet of Lander, Crumbstone, Erna, and Beauty. On December 16, 1944, Sheila, a sheepdog owned by shepherds John Dagg and Frank Moscroft, was on the scene when an American B-17 flying fortress bomb carrying a full payload of bombs, crashed into the Cheviot Hills on the border of England and Scotland. Despite a driving blizzard and near-zero visibility, Sheila discovered four of the bomber's crew sheltering in a nearby crevice. She arrived just in the nick of time, leading the crew away as the bombs aboard the burning wreckage exploded. Other dogs had actually accompanied their masters into combat. One notable example is Bing, an Alsatian collie cross who served with the British 13th Parachute Battalion. Trained to sniff out the enemy and freeze if he sensed danger, Bing parachuted into Normandy, along with his handler, Lance Corporal Ken Bailey, on June 6, 1944. He later took part in the Allied crossing of the Rhine into Germany and was wounded in action before retiring and being returned to his original owners. Another famous paradox was Robert Collie, who served with the Special Air Service, or SAS, and who is alleged to have made over 20 parachute jumps with the regiment during the Italian campaign. However, in 2006, it was revealed that Rob's exploits were actually part of an elaborate hoax to prevent the dog from being returned to its original owners. In reality, Rob never made a single parachute parachute jump and spent the war as the companion of the regiment quartermaster. A dog with a more reliable claim to fame is Chips, an American-German Shepherd Collie Husky mix who served with the United States 3rd Infantry Division in North Africa, Sicily, Italy, France, and Germany. In February of 1943, when his unit was pinned down on the beaches of Sicily by an Italian machine gun team, Chips leapt into the enemy bunker and attacked the gunners, forcing them to surrender. In November 1944, German Shepherd Rifleman Kahn and his handler Lance Corporal James Muldoon of the Cameroonians were taking part in a night assault on the island of Wacheren in the Dutch Scheldt estuary when their assault boat came under heavy fire, causing it to capsize. Unable to swim, Muldoon began to sink to the bottom of the river, only to be rescued by Rafferman Khan, who, despite the heavy shelling, pulled Muldoon to the surface and towed him nearly 200 meters to safety. Other dogs have even given their lives to save their units, including Gander, a Newfoundland dog serving with the Royal Rifles of Canada. During the Battle of Hong Kong in December 1941, Gander picked up a Japanese hand grenade and rushed it back towards the enemy, saving the lives of dozens of soldiers but dying in the resulting explosion. All of the most recent Dickin medals have been also awarded to dogs who were widely used during the Afghanistan and Iraq wars to locate mines and improvised explosive devices or IEDs. Such dogs include Buster, an English Springer Spaniel attached to the Duke of Wellington's regiment, who in early 2003 discovered a cache of insurgent weapons near the Iraqi town of Safwan. Sadia Labrador Retriever, who in November 2005 uncovered a pressure cooker bomb in the UN headquarters in Kabul, and Luca, the United States Marine Corps German Shepherd who conducted nearly 400 explosive-finding missions and lost her left leg in an IED blast. 
Dickon medals have also been awarded to numerous dogs who helped locate survivors in the rubble of the World Trade Centers following the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks, including Salty, Rosalie, and Apollo. Despite their long and illustrious history of service in warfare, only four horses have received the Dickon Medal, largely because the military utility of horses had significantly declined by the time the award was created. Three of these medals were awarded to Regal, Olga, and Upstart, who served with the London Metropolitan Police during the Second World War. These horses were used to direct traffic and boost civilian morale, especially during the Blitz and the later bombardment of London by V-1 and V-2 guided missiles. Regal, Olga, and Upstart were particularly noted for their coolness under pressure, remaining calm and unfazed even as bombs exploded all around them. The fourth equine medal was awarded to Sergeant Reckless, a Mongolian mayor who served with the 5th Regiment of the United States Marines during the Korean War. In March 1953, Sergeant Reckless distinguished herself during the battle for Outpost Vegas, making 51 solo trips and carrying nearly 400 rounds of ammunition in a single day while under heavy fire. During her nine-month career, Sergeant Reckless was wounded twice by shrapnel, officially promoted promoted to the field rank of sergeant and received two Purple Hearts and eight other awards, including a Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, a National Defense Service Medal, a Korean Service Medal, and of course the Dickin Medal. After the war, she retired to the 5th Marines Regiment headquarters at Camp Pendleton, California, where she lived a pampered life until her death in 1968 at the age of 20. And finally, we come to the outlier of our list, the sole feline recipient of the Dickin Medal, Simon the Cat. Simon was the ship's cat aboard the Royal Navy sloop of war HMS Amethyst in April 1949 when she was fired upon by communist Chinese forces in what became known as the Yangtze or Amethyst Incident. One of the Chinese shells struck a direct hit on the captain's cabin, seriously wounding Simon with shrapnel. Simon was immediately rushed to the sick bay, where medics tended to his wounds, but he was not expected to survive the night. Miraculously, however, Simon made a rapid recovery and soon returned to his regular duties, boosting morale and helping to eliminate a rat infestation and protect the amethyst's food stores, while the ship remained trapped on the Yangtze for nearly three months. After taking out a particularly vicious rat nicknamed Mao Zedong after the communist Chinese leader, Simon was promoted to the rank of Abel Seacat. Tragically, shortly after returning to England, Simon contracted a virus and died on November 28, 1949, at the age of two. The deeds of White Vision, Chip, Sergeant Reckless, Simon, and all other Dickon Medal recipients serve to remind us that the bravest and most loyal soldiers are not always human, and that no matter how daunting or dangerous the field of battle, our animal companions will always be there, fighting right alongside. So, I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.